Now that Apple has refreshed their 2025K iMac with absolutely killer specs and features, a lot of you guys are upgrading. So we created a buyer's guide video to help you figure out which model and which upgrades you should buy. But one of the biggest dilemmas is how much RAM you should buy. Now this video is gonna apply to every medium to higher end Mac like the higher end 13 inch MacBook Pro, which can be configured up to 32 gigs of RAM, the 16 inch MacBook Pro with 64, the Mac mini, the 5K iMac, and even the Mac Pro. Now the great thing about the 2025K iMac is that we still have an access door for upgrading the RAM ourselves, and RAM is much less expensive than it was last year. For example, 32 gigabytes used to be $171, now it's only 120. And 128 gigs used to cost $1,100, and now it's only 500 bucks. So what we're gonna do in this video is run actual benchmarks in real world tests, like photo editing using Lightroom Classic, video editing using Final Cut Pro 10, gaming performance, Logic Pro Music Production, and I'll even discuss programming using Xcode. We're gonna be comparing the factory 8 gigs that comes with the iMac, then 16 gigs for $70 on Amazon, 32 gigabytes for $120, and 64 gigs for $250. And by the way, we'll have links to all of these RAM deals down in the description below. Now I do wanna mention that we're actually not gonna be testing 128 gigs because we tested 64 gigs and realized that even that was overkill for a lot of these tests. So you really only wanna get 128 gigs if you wanna show off to your friends or maybe if you're running virtual machines. Now before we begin, here are the specs of our test machine. The $2300 2025K iMac, which we think is a very solid option for a lot of people, as you guys know if you watched our recent review video. Now before we get into our testing, if this video ends up helping you out, make sure to go down below into our merch shelf and check out our all over Apple product design and our new Apple product mask. And I do want to mention that we ran all of these tests with 10 Chrome tabs open in the background, which is a good realistic limit to give a little bit of extra wiggle room just in case you like to browse the web while doing your work like I personally do. Let's go ahead and start off our testing with Geekbench 5's CPU test, which actually does get affected by RAM since the test happens in short bursts unlike a real world scenario. Going from eight gigabytes of RAM to 64, the single core score does go up by around 28 points, which honestly isn't that much, but wait until you see the multi-core score. Here, we see a massive gain of 1,617 points going from eight gigs to 64 gigabytes of RAM, or a 22% improvement in this benchmark and there really wasn't that big of a jump between 32 and 64. So 32 gigs of RAM seems to be pretty solid so far. And it was even more interesting that just by going from eight gigs to 16 gave us a huge improvement, almost a thousand points higher. Now let's get right into our Lightroom Classic photo editing tests, which greatly depend on RAM. So we should see some pretty interesting results here. Exporting 500 raw 42 megapixel photos, there was a massive improvement going from eight gigs of RAM to 64, being almost twice as fast, which is a huge surprise since all we did was change the RAM and it's still on the same eight core system. And by simply going from eight to 16 gigs saves you over 10 minutes on the export. Not bad for an extra $70 if you're buying the RAM straight from Amazon instead of paying Apple $200 for it on their website. Now moving on to building one-to-one -one previews of 50 raw 42 megapixel photos, our results are actually a little bit different. Just like the export test, we finished almost twice as fast by having 64 gigs of RAM compared to the factory 8 gigs. And again, just like the other test, going from 8 to 16 saves you over a full minute. So this shows that even for users who are looking to buy a 13 inch MacBook Pro, definitely get at least 16 gigs if you're photo editing or you're doing graphic design work like in Photoshop or other apps like that. And it's even worth going up to 32 gigs if you're doing it all the time. However, going from 32 gigs to 64 only saved us three seconds when building the previews, which isn't nearly as big of an improvement as for the export test. Now moving on to our gaming test, 
we ran Unigen's Heaven benchmark while having 10 Chrome tabs open, and to our surprise, we got basically the same score no matter how much RAM we had, even with only 8 gigs of RAM, which was surprising. Linus Tech Tips actually did a great video on this, testing three different games, and they found that going from 8 gigs to 16 gave them a much smoother gaming experience, but going from 16 to 32 didn't really change much at all, so you should definitely watch that video if you want to learn more. One benefit with the iMac is that you can buy some RAM and add it to the existing 8 gigs of RAM that's in the system already. So if you buy a 16 gig kit for only $70 on Amazon, you can fill the empty slots and have 24 gigs total just to be safe. Or of course, you can get a 32 gig kit and end up with 40 gigs of RAM total. However, if you simply fill in the empty slots, your RAM speed will actually downclock from 2.6 gigahertz to 2.1 gigahertz. So 9to5Mac found a great trick on how to get around this. You basically take the bottom stick from the existing RAM and move it to the top slot. So you should have the top two slots filled, and then putting your two new sticks on the bottom, and you should end up with all of your RAM running at the highest speed, as you can see in 9to5Mac's video. Now moving on to music production using Logic Pro 10, our viewer Joe Swainson pointed us to the new Logic Benchmark 2 project created by Martin Ray, which basically has you run as many instrument tracks as possible before you get a system overload message. In this test, we were surprised to see that Logic was only taking a couple of gigabytes of memory, and going from 8 to 64 gigs only helped our system run 5 extra tracks at once before overloading. So it seems like, at least for this test, RAM isn't that big of a factor for Logic Pro 10, and we recommend at least 16 gigs unless you know your workload will require more RAM due to using more plugins or things like that. Now finally getting into video editing with Final Cut Pro 10, we exported our standard 5 minute 4K clip with 2 LUTs and film grain added, which is basically the most common format and workload that most YouTubers use. Going from 8GB to 64, we saved about a minute and 20 seconds on our export, which shows that Final Cut was definitely being limited by only having 8 gigs of RAM, and over time, you'll definitely notice that difference. And even going to 32 gigs helped out quite a bit for exporting this 5 minute 4K clip, saving us 26 seconds in this test, but going from 32 to 64 didn't really do much at all, only saving us 4 seconds, so we can definitely see the diminishing returns here. Now we also ran our 5 minute Canon C200 60p raw export, which is definitely a more difficult test. And here, we saved 2 minutes and 20 seconds by going from 8 gigs to 64 gigs of RAM, which honestly isn't as big of a difference as I was expecting. We definitely saw a decent improvement going up to 32 gigs of RAM, but going to 64 gigs only gave us a 15 second improvement, which isn't that much at all, considering the total time it took to export the raw clip. Now before we get into the conclusions, there's just one more test. We basically ran the Lightroom export test while having the 5 minute 4K project open in Final Cut Pro. It was interesting to see that most of the results were identical compared to not having Final Cut Pro open, which means that macOS is doing a very good job with page filing, basically offloading Final Cut Pro from the RAM onto the SSD to give more RAM to Lightroom Classic, so that's a very good sign. However, with only 8GB of RAM, our export was slower by around 50 seconds, which means that even page filing couldn't help with RAM that low. So now, with all of that testing complete, let's go through our recommendations. 8GB is simply not enough, even for basic web browsing with Chrome. It suffered greatly in basically every single test, taking almost twice as long for video editing and for photo editing. Now if you're a gamer, you'll want at least 16GB of RAM for a smooth gaming experience, potentially keeping the existing 8 gigs so you have some extra wiggle room for Discord. And you should probably go up to 32GB if you want to do some live game streaming, but you honestly don't need any more than that. Now for Logic Pro 10 users, we were surprised to see that RAM didn't really have that big of an effect. So 16 gigs should be enough, or 32, 
if you're running various plugins, but 64 gigabytes is probably already overkill. For video editing using Final Cut Pro 10, it seems like 32 gigs is honestly the sweet spot. So you can buy a 32 gig kit for $120, and then in the future, you can add another 32 gigs if you feel like it's not enough. But honestly, we don't think going for 64 gigs is worth it for video editing, and that applies to all Macs, including the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Now for photo editing using Lightroom Classic or other graphics design work like Photoshop or anything like that, you'll definitely want at least 32 gigabytes for a smooth editing experience and fast export times. Going up to 64 gigs didn't really help with building previews, but it did save a couple of minutes on our export test. So to some people who believe that time is money, paying an extra $130 for 64 gigs of RAM would probably be worth it in this case. And then later, if you really want to, you can add another 64 gigs for a total of 128. If you ever feel like you wanna try and squeeze a little bit more performance out of your Mac, or if you just wanna show off to your friends. So based on that conclusion, I think users who use Xcode for programming will probably have a great experience with 32 gigs of RAM and possibly a little bit of extra gains with 64 gigs, which could be worth the extra $130 to some people, but not to everyone. And by the way, we're actually working with one of our viewers to get an Xcode benchmark working, so subscribe if you wanna see that. And there you guys go. Hopefully this video helps you finally figure out how much RAM you need for your Mac, no matter which Mac you have. So if this video helps you out, go ahead and use the RAM links below to find the best deals on 5k iMac and Mac Pro RAM and go ahead and click that circle about to subscribe and be sure to check out our Apple product merch like our all over Apple product premium t-shirt or our new Apple product mask. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.